Okay, compositions. If I had told you to find f of 3, you know that that means go plug 3 into your function wherever you have an x. Well, we're going to look at these compositions, and it's very, very similar. Normally, we have f of x. Well, here we have f of g of x. What that means is we are going to be plugging in the function g of x into our f equation. So instead of just plugging in a 3, we're actually going to be plugging in an entire equation. So this one right here is red f of g of x, and a short way that they might write that is f, and then there will be an open circle and a g. So that means the exact same thing. Now we can flip our f and our g around, so we could say g of f of x, and then it would be written a g first, an open circle, and then an f. Now, one thing to keep in mind, these two are usually not equal. So here's going to be our example. Let f of x equal 3 times x to the negative 2, and g of x be 2x minus 1. Find f of g and g of f and state the domain. Let's just start with f of g of x. So f of g of x. What that tells me is I need to take the g function and plug it into f. So I'm going to take this 2x minus 1, and I'm going to plug it in where I have an x in my f function. What I recommend you do is rewrite your f function with empty parentheses wherever you have an x. You'll be less likely to make a mistake if you do that. Then go back and plug in this g function inside those parentheses. So there's my g inside my f function. Once you get to this point, you do need to simplify it out. So I've got to take care of this negative exponent first. So I would actually have 3, and then that 2x minus 1 squared would move to the bottom. I need to also state my domain now for this. Well, when I'm looking at my domain, I definitely have a division problem going on here. So I've got to ask myself, what would cause this denominator to be 0? Well, I need to set the denominator equal to 0 in order to figure that out, because I need to find those bad numbers. So when I set that equal to 0, I'm going to square root both sides. And since I'm applying the square root, it would be plus minus. But since it's 0, it's just 0 because there is no positive or negative 0. Add 1 to both sides, divide by 2, and I get x equals 1 half. This is a very bad number. We do not want x equals 1 half. So that's the portion dealing with my um, division. Now I've got to go back, and I need to determine if I have any even roots anywhere. Well, in my original, or my final answer, I don't have any even roots. Don't be deceived by the 2 right here. That's a squared. That's not a 1 half. Remember, roots are always fractional exponents. Okay, now let's go ahead and do g of f of x. So this time, I am going to plug the f equation into my g equation. So again, I recommend that you write that equation out with empty parentheses first. Then go back and plug in your f equation. So it's kind of like we're substituting a number in, only it's a full expression instead of just a number. Now, for this one, I can simplify that out. 2 times 3 gives me 6, so I'm going to have 6x to the negative 2 minus 1. Well, as I look at that, it doesn't appear that there's any division in it, but you have to remember these negative exponents is really 6 divided by x squared minus 1. So there is division. This one's a little bit easier, though. For this one, when I set the denominator equal to 0, square root both sides, I get x equals to 0. Then I have to check for um, even roots, and again, I don't happen to have any on this one because I don't have any fractional exponents, so my domain for this one would be all real numbers, except x cannot be equal to 0. Okay, here's a practice. So go ahead and see if you can find f of g and g of f, and then state the domain for each. 
for f of g, you should have started out by writing 7 with an empty set of parentheses and then 1 half to the outside, then go back, plug in the 3x plus 2. Now one thing you have to realize is you cannot distribute this 7 because when it's raised to the 1 half, it's really a square root. So I can't just multiply the 7 throughout because it's not in a square root. Now when I was looking for my domain, I had to think to myself, I have this even root and I cannot have the inside of that be negative. So really, this 3x plus 2 has to be greater than or equal to 0. Because if it, as a group, is negative, I would get i's. So I set up the inequality, 3x plus 2 has to be greater than or equal to 0, and then I solve that. Subtract 2 from both sides, divide by 3. I don't need to flip the sign because it was dividing by a positive 3. And I find out that x has to be greater than or equal to negative 2 thirds. If I pick anything less than negative two-thirds, I'm going to end up getting an imaginary number in here. So that's how I came up with that domain. When I did g of f, I started by writing my g equation as 3, empty set of parentheses, plus 2. Then I plugged in the f equation here. Now this one, I can take that 3 times 7 because this 1 half is not attached to the 7. So I get 21 x to the 1 half plus 2. For this one, my only issue is that I have the square root of x, so that can't be negative. x has to be greater than or equal to 0. 